I'm Joe Seabrooks, and welcome to Sensational News, where we celebrate the amazing students and the incredible programs at the Cedar Valley campus of the newly transformed Dallas College. Today, you are in for an amazing treat. Put your seatbelts on, because we're going to hear from our phenomenal student athletes at the Cedar Valley campus. Welcome. How are y'all doing? I'm doing good. 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 Well, tell the people who you are and what your plans, uh, your academic plans and professional plans are uh, my name is jordan berry i'm from dallas texas i play on the men's basketball team i'm the owner of shoe first studios a clothing brand based out of dallas and my professional plans uh after i graduate in may is to focus on my clothing brand and build an empire out of it that's fantastic so you're a business owner yes sir say the name of your company again shoe first studios you can shop online at www.shoefirststudios.com <laughs> Oh, I think you heard it here. Okay. <laughs> Shoot First Studios. All right. Who's next? I am. My name is Soleil Trejo. I'm a part of the indoor women's volleyball program as well as sand volleyball. I'm currently from Dallas, Texas, and I have an academic plan to continue my athletic career at University of Science and Arts of Oklahoma, where I will commit to play for the women's indoor volleyball team. Right. I intend to major in nursing and hopefully become a neonatal nurse later on. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you for being here. Who's next? Hello, my name is John Ayala. I'm Colombian and I'm the captain for the men's soccer team. And I want to graduate this this uh, this May. And I want to become an aerospace engineer and become the first person to create a land speeder so we can all start flying our cars in the air. Wait a minute. So you're talking about the land speeder from Star Wars? Yes, sir. Tell me R2 D2. Yes, sir. C3 PO. C3 PO. Anakin Skywalker. And you're going to make that real. Yes, sir. That's you heard it here, folks. All right. Thank you, John. All right. Who's next? Hi, my name is Nia Looper. Um, my major is business and marketing. And after this school, I'm going to go on to a four year to get another marketing and business degree <laughs> um, in hopes of one day becoming an entrepreneur. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Now, what type of business do you want to own? So I want to get into the beauty industry. I want to have a skincare line and also focus on um, vitamins. I feel like a lot of people don't take as many vitamins as they should, and it's very beneficial. And they don't get enough daily water intake, and I just want to promote that so everyone can be happy and healthy and have great skin. That's great. You going to do anything for hair growth, maybe? Oh, yeah. I do have hair growth oils. Um, my hair is in a protective style right now, but I do have long, pretty curly hair. And I just know all about that. And I can step into different industries once I get my business up and running. I love it. Well, fantastic. Thanks for being here. Excellent. Let's give a go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Go for it. Uh, my name is Leo De La Garza. Uh, I'm a member of the pitching staff at Cedar Valley College. Um, I'm a business major, and I'm going to get my associates next fall, and then I'll move on to a four-year college to get my bachelor's. Excellent, 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 excellent. It, has everyone had a chance to go? Uh, I'm sorry. Please, go for it. My name is Julissa. My parents are from Honduras. I was born here. This is my first year playing for Cedar Valley. I was actually named captain of the team my freshman oh, year. Oh, wow. Congratulations. And my plans for the future are to is to major in biotechnology or biology so I can go to pre I can do the pre-med field or the PA field. I'm still kind of confused, but we'll get there. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm just happy to have you all here. Coach, we have you here also. Tell us who you are and what you do to make Cedar Valley great. Hello, my name is Latasha Roach. I am the head women's basketball coach at City Valley College. And what I do to make this great, I lead our athletes to a successful career. Well, you know, I'm excited to have this conversation. You know, believe it or not, years ago, generations ago, uh, I was a student athlete myself. And I'm curious to know, how did you get started in your sport? Uh, I got started in my sport at a young age. I was actually a multi-sport athlete, so I played football soccer and basketball but just as uh just getting older just year by year uh, i just decided to just pick one sport i used to really love football but i like basketball too so, so at like at like eight years old i kind of picked and then i just chose basketball and just ran with it and excellent excellent it, well, so. we're fortunate to have you here yes indeed how about you 
Well, when I was younger, I was actually at a rec center with my brothers and they were, I think, playing basketball. And I just decided to wander off and I wandered into the other gym and I saw this really aggressive but crazy lady yelling at people. And I was like, I want to do that. That's exactly what I want to do. Awesome. And so I hopped into the drills and I met uh, an amazing woman named Martha Collins and she kind of helped me start my late career in volleyball. That's fantastic. So who 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 would have thought following those Nuggethead brothers would have brought you to where you are today? I really, honestly, I had no idea, but I'm very blessed and happy to have that opportunity. Excellent. Thank you. John, how did you choose soccer? I started watching soccer and TV since I was three years old. And then growing up, I started playing other sports too, like football and track. And then through on, on my freshman year of high school, I had to pick because uh, due to conflict in the spring, I chose soccer and I just ran with it and started kicking goals. All right, ran, uh, ran to go kick. I love that. <laughs> Fantastic. Leo, how'd you become a superstar baseball player? <laughs> well, uh, my dad, he grew up in like a less fortunate area in like South Texas. And uh, he didn't really play much organized sports. And baseball was his favorite sport. So I guess he wanted to like feel the opportunity to give us that chance to play organized sports. And I fell in love with it. Excellent. Well, we're happy to have you. Yes, ma'am. Miss Nia. So I actually found out about basketball through my church and I started playing upward for them when I was a kid. And then it just I just loved it. So I just kept playing it. And I also started playing other sports like them, a multi-sport athlete. And I eventually just settled down on playing basketball because it was my favorite and I have a lot of love for the game. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Last but not least, right? Yes. <laughs> so I have to thank my father, although he's not in my life, like he's there sometimes, but I really, I'm grateful that he shared his passion for soccer and shared it to me. And that's how I started playing soccer. And he actually coached me since I was little and put me in clubs and stuff like that. So I'm grateful for that. Excellent. Well, you know, I appreciate that. And we, we are fortunate to have you here. I will say something to you. So this next question is very important because there's a lot of our businesses and companies that are watching this video and they all are looking for talented, creative, hardworking, collaborative team players like you. Tell our companies right now, what will it take for them? What kind of environment do they have to create to make you want to work with them? Who'll go first? I would say you most definitely want to uh, set a, I would say a competitive tone in your work environment. Uh, I want in a working and work environment, I want everybody around me to compete and get better. I don't want to stay in the same position that I was in whenever, say for instance, that I got a job two years down the road, I want to be in a better position and I want everybody around me to be in a better position. So I think uh, just drilling work ethic and just being competitive, I uh, would treat a job like a sport as well. So uh, just playing sports, it can trans it can translate to other things in life just other than playing sports. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, so allow your competitive spirit to thrive in the workplace. I Most love definitely. that. Okay. How about you? I completely agree. I think I definitely want a competitive atmosphere, but also I think I want employers and employees that are trustworthy and loyal to me. I think that's very essential to create a successful work environment, because if you can't trust the person next to you, can't work with them, there isn't any opportunity to grow. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, in my company, I want people with the same mindset as me and us together working to, towards one specific goal, just like a soccer team. One specific goal, just like the winning soccer team at yeah. Cedar Valley, yeah. by the way. Leo, your thoughts? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, like, kind of like what they said. I want to touch base on that. Like, uh, I want like a company that will make me stronger as a person, uh, not just in the workplace, but also in my day-to-day -day life. And I want to be able to improve my skill set like, along the years. Yeah, Sp spoken like a true champion. I love that. <laughs> um, I want to work for a company that's personable and that – they just teach everyone more skills um, so everyone can grow as people in, in the work field better than when they came in there. So you want to be better than better when you leave than when you, when you came? Yes, exactly. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Fantastic. I must say I agree with all of you guys. I agree with John. I want someone who has the same mindset. Um, don't have a fixed mindset. You better have a growth mindset just because – it's, it's better for yourself. And I want my company to value me as a person. Do not, I want them to not take advantage of me, of my work, of my time. So that's one of the important things I want someone to have. 
Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, Coach, let me ask you, because, you know, it's our expectation that uh, by having an athletic program that we're giving our students uh, a competitive advantage uh, for life beyond college. Uh, as a coach, what do you intentionally do or how do you intentionally engage our students to prepare them for life after uh, sports? But what I like to do, uh, even when I'm out recruiting, I tell my girls all the time, I kind of share my background as far as, you know, uh, just my background as far as just being in, being in their seat. And my job is to connect before I correct. And I say I like build relationships with them. So I like them to get to know me as Coach Roach, but also no, I'm not perfect. And I let them know from my childhood, just my history and where I'm at today, like what I went through to get to where I'm at. Like, don't give up. You know, I'm big on perseverance and things like that. So my job, again, teach them life skills. Because the route that I took to get where I'm at today is like, you know what, I couldn't give up. So my job, I try to teach them strength to be mentally tough because in this world, I mean, you have to be mentally tough. You know, you can't let everything bother you and get to you or distract you because if it do, you're going to lose every time. I tell them all the time about making decisions, you know, emotional decisions. You know, take a deep breath, you know, think about it, you know, 24 hours from now, but don't make decisions when you are ment uh, mentally and emotionally broke down. You know, don't let distractions get in the way. So as a coach and my student athletes and things like that, I teach them again, you know, how to make sure they go out and get their degree, you know, because when basketball is over with, you know, you have a life ahead of you. So we talk about, you know, a degree plan. We talk about program and study. What do you want to do? Do I need to go with you? I have um, looks on jobs and things like that. So, again, my job is to teach them life skills. I mean, go out there, win games. That's something that we always do. But also the challenge is what you want to do after basketball. You know, yeah. when you get injured and things like that, what are the plans? What can I do to help you? So my job Coach. is to teach him things outside of the basketball court. Coach, I love that. In fact, I think I may try to borrow that from you, <laughs> that, we, that, we, we, that we connect before we correct. Oh, you got to. It's, it's uh, important. You I, know. I, I love that. And I think that's a, that epitomizes uh, the program and what uh, these young people represent. But let me switch gears for a second. And this may not be the most pleasant conversation. I don't want to bring up old traumatic memories. <laughs> but... We cannot talk in 2022 about anything without talking about COVID-19. Tell us, tell the audience, how has COVID-19 impacted you as a student athlete? I would say as a student athlete, COVID impacted me in a greater way than, than I would have thought. Uh, it actually turned me into an entrepreneur and it turned me into a business owner. So before COVID, I was really heavy on basketball. I'm still heavy on basketball, but it opened the door for me just to look 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 later down the road and just open my options. So okay. now I'm not heavily just waiting on basketball. If the, if the ball stopped bouncing today, I have something to fall back on and just be successful in life other than just basketball. Excellent. So COVID, was it the, the amount of free time that came with COVID that put you in the situation to want to be an entrepreneur faster than what you were ready to do? It was most definitely, we had a lot of free time. So on my free time, instead of people playing games and just being with their family, I was with my family still, but I was on YouTube a lot, just looking up information and adding value, adding value to myself to just put on myself. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, 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 Lise, tell us how did COVID impact you? My name is Soleil. Soleil. Sorry. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, mine was a little bit of an opposite effect. COVID definitely isolated me from the sport and the people that I love. I'm a very social and interactive person. And so for me to be isolated for a little while, it definitely took a toll on my mental health, unfortunately. But at the end of the day, it yeah. gave me an opportunity to get to know myself better and to find those weak points and those moments of let's say discouragement and be able to work through it and understand where I am in life and what I've got to be blessed for. And it definitely helped me find an advantage towards myself. Excellent. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, being a student athlete during COVID was a positive thing for me. Uh, being a student athlete, you have to wake up early and then leave late at night. Uh -huh. And then when COVID came, I would have extra time to hang out with my family. And that, that was such a huge blessing for me. Yeah, yeah, that is a positive. I think we all had had to grow closer yeah. with the people in our households. <laughs> so yeah, I appreciate that too. Excellent. Anyone else want to share? Um, COVID for me, it like brought out the weak points in my study habit, not being able to oh. go to school. Like I'm an in-person learner. I have ADHD. I can't focus. I can't sit still and I'm always just doing stuff. So like for it to be up to me to do it at home and make sure I get the same amount of work done, it was just hard. So I just had to 
build better study habits and put a plan in place. That way I could finish my classes and not fall behind. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. <clears throat> um, yeah, so uh, it was my senior year of high school when it kind of all broke out about two years ago this week, I bet, I believe I seen. But um, yeah, like kind of the opposite of what she said. I felt like it kind of forced me to like learn because I feel like I was more distracted when you have those social interactions. Ah, in the okay. But yeah, I feel like it uh, kind of brought out like the better side academically towards me. But athletic wise, it kind of was unfortunate that it canceled our season and stuff. But yeah, I feel like it made me a stronger person. Okay, I appreciate that perspective. For me, COE was kind of hard, especially financially with my family. My mom's a single mother, and unfortunately, she got laid off at work from work. So my sister and I had to pick up two jobs so we can pay the rent and the bills. So I mean, it made me a more responsible person. I mean, like Coach um, Roach said that we we do have a life outside of our sport, so we have to know how to manage our time and how to pay our bills because. Soccer or any sport is not going to, we might not make money, but who knows? We might go pro one day. Who knows, right? Who knows? Right. It, it, may be a, it may be more responsible and I guess more, I don't know, more calm. I was chaotic at the time and now I had to like calm down. You had to focus. Yeah. You had to focus. <laughs> well, I appreciate knowing that COVID wasn't all bad. Uh, thank you for sharing that. So if I can ask this question. Um, well, let, well, before I do that, let me ask you, Coach, what, what, what observations um, you and the coaching staff ha have you made as relates to the changes that you may have seen in our athletes uh, because of COVID? Um, the, the work ethic, um, you know, with them being off again, uh, I know I was there when the season canceled or we pick up something, but coming out of high school, the kids, they just like, it's like starting back over again. And okay. so uh, also from the court and also in the classroom because they're so used to the virtual learning that was going on. So as a coach, it's like staying on them, staying on them, staying on them, making sure they get the grades in. And then as far as just their work ethic and their athletic ability, it's like uh, reprogramming, reprogramming, uh, reprogramming. So that was kind of, it's, it's kind of a challenge as well because you recruit, you see the way they was before COVID, then you get them here. It's kind of like now it's going to take the, a year so let's say the off okay. season going into the season itself to see, OK, you know, we got to get back. You know, we can't just go into the season and play. We actually have to restructure and rebuild because they lost so much uh, being being in the house. So it sounds like there was some regression, both mm -hmm. athletically and academically. It was. It was. Oh, like, wow. and so that was that was hard uh, coming off of that again, just bringing in, you know, bringing in recruits and bringing in girls. It's like you have to just, you know, restructure everything because the learning is different now. Obviously, we're in person. But like, you know, Neil was saying, I know it was a struggle um, watching my athletes uh, virtually try to, um, you know, attend school. You know, they just come out of high school virtually. So I know me being a high school teacher, how that was for my students. You know, they, they work, like you said, they, a lot of them lost their jobs and things like that. Yeah. Their parents did things. So my students, they have to work a job or two. They weren't even in class. So even just coming in as, as athletes and things like that, they just come out of school virtually going into um, when we did have the COVID that one year or well, last year virtually. So it was, it was really a struggle on and off the court as far as the COVID. Okay. Well, it looks like we have uh, overcome uh, COVID, and I'm happy. We did. I'm yes. so excited. Ha happy yeah, that I'm we no case are, are, are hopefully on the other side of COVID. So let me let me shift gears now. Um, you know, I, I remember way back when uh, music was a big part of uh, my academic and athletic journey. Uh, I'm very curious to know what are the top songs on your playlist and why? Right now on my playlist, I'm listening to a lot of Nipsey Hussle. I okay. Just, I just like what he's rapping. He, I can, I can, I can, can, I can relate to him. It's about what he's talking about his marathon. Like it took him, it took him a long time just to get to where he was at, to where people see him at today, and just the image that he portrayed and just all he went through to get to where he at is just, it's amazing to see. So, I listen to him because he talks about it a lot in his in his songs. Yeah, Nipsey Hussle, may he rest in peace. Thank you. Right. Appreciate that. We'll go next. I will. Uh, so <laughs> I love music. I love a lot of different artists. There's a lot of variety to my music playlist. And so I go from country liking John Party to um, liking Post Malone and Congratulations, one of my favorite songs. Okay. <laughs> so just rock and all kinds of stuff. So I have a, a wide variety of music tastes. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. 
Well, I like rock. I like the bands uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Tame Impala. Red Hot Chili Peppers. The Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, they're Those great. old guys. <laughs> yeah. They're, okay. They're great singers. Okay. I'm just checking. Just making sure. Um, I like ACDC. I like wow, Nirv okay. Nirvana. Uh, but like, I like it because it gets me fired up for when we have soccer games. That's my instant. Okay. Awesome. You're a throwback. I love that. <laughs> Excellent. Who we'll go next, uh, Leo? Yeah, uh, I listen to a lot of rap, and uh, but it's it kind of varies everywhere. A lot of uh, alternative, like alternative rock, like you were saying, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, we got like stuff like the Eagles. Um, the Eagles, like yeah. the Eagles yeah, from yeah, back in the, the day, the seventies Eagles. No, well, I don't. <laughs> I don't really know. What okay, was. okay, yeah. it was before yeah. you were born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I promise you that. Okay, I promise exactly. you that. And then, yeah, uh, yeah, listen, uh, three eleven, Weezer, stuff like that. And then uh, a lot of Kanye West. Kanye West. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> All right. I like R and B music. I like Queen Naja and. I'm really heavy on Ari Linux at the moment. Ari Linux, yeah. okay. And I just like a beat music that can pull me out of a bad mood and just take my mind off of everything. Okay, I love that. I love that. <laughs> well, I like Bad Bunny. Just the artist. <laughs> bad <there>. Bunny. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. And he's from the DFW? No, he's from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, okay. Yes. So you see, I listen to Bad Bunny, but when I'm working out, because I need my heart to start pumping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I can switch up on you when I'm doing school where I'll be putting some orchestra stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're classical, huh? Okay, but, Beethoven. Yeah. Something like that, but yeah. Awesome, uh, awesome. Well, I definitely have to uh, pick up my music game. I appreciate you all sharing that. Um, but let us pause for a short moment as we uh, hear from a message from Dallas College. This is Marcus. He wants to become a teacher, so he's taking classes at Dallas College. And these are Marcus's parents. They are glad he's going to Dallas College. So what's the difference between attending a university or going to Dallas College? At Dallas College, you're enrolling in a career, not just a class. Translation, J-O-B. Now that's what I'm talking about. Dallas College, education that works. To get started on your own career, click here. Translation, J-O-B. Go ahead, click the link. So welcome back to the Sensational News video blog where we celebrate the amazing students and the incredible programs at the Dallas College Cedar Valley campus. We are here today speaking to some phenomenal student athletes who represent us extremely well, who I'm so proud of. Let me ask you more about your experience as a student athlete. Could you share with me some <laughs> of the pros and cons of being a student athlete? Uh, a pros, the pros and cons of playing men's basketball in college. The pro is you get to play and advance to another level. Coming from high school, you get to advance to the next level and play a game that you love. A con would be time management and the balance between off the court and school. So coming in as a freshman, like I said earlier, you have individuals and a lot of workouts. So you have to balance your day and be able to good at time management just to be successful as a, as a student athlete. Fantastic. So it's an opportunity to really hone your skills, but it comes at a price when it comes to time. Yes, sir. Excellent. All right. Yes. And who'll go next? Yes. I'll go next. Um, I'm a very optimistic person, so I don't like to think that there's any cons out of any situation, but I will say that for pros, I think you gain a lot of great mentors that can help oh. you work through life and work through hard yeah. decisions. You receive a lot of life lessons that you carry on throughout life. And I think that at the end of the day, come, some of the cons that you would say would be dealing with those high pressure moments and how to understand what you're feeling, how to work through those feelings, how to make the appropriate decisions without being emotional. And so I think that would be the con, but at the same time, we as athletes persevere and we're strong and we know how to how to carry ourselves in a very upbeat and prideful way. I, I love that. Thank you. John, do you agree with that? <coughs> yeah, I do agree. I also have a different con. There's a lot of sacrifice between all of us. Like some of us have to go work after college. We have to uh, study too. Yeah, put in the hard work 
on and off the field. But a pro is, is you get to meet new people everywhere. Yeah, and that's you right. You get to socialize, get your social network expanding. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I, I remember that. I, I, you know, there's folks who I'm bonded to for the last 30 years who I wouldn't have never met or been in, in touch with or connected with if not for athletics. So I agree with that wholeheartedly. Leo, what are your thoughts? What are some of the pros and cons? Uh, yeah, I feel like there's some cons, um, like socially, you know, friends that you have outside of like athletics and stuff. But there's more, I feel like there's more pros that outweigh those cons, such as building new relationships on like your team, meeting new teammates and stuff. And then you can also use, use athletics as like an outlet to find scholarships and other opportunities to get on from, you know, junior college and get to that four year that you want to. Excellent. Yes, indeed. Nia, your thoughts? Um, I agree with what they were all saying. Um, some of the pros, like Coach Roach always told us to connect with our teammates. You're building a sisterhood here. And my other coach, Coach Z, said that college is where you make your long-term friends that you take trips with when you get older, that you invite to your wedding. So you want to do all that here now. And some of the cons would be like they said also time management and just deciding to yourself what's mandatory and what sacrifices you need to make to be able to be the best student athlete you can be and also keep your grades up so you can play. Excellent. Love that. Well, they kind of said all of my cons. Too, so <laughs> I'm just going to gonna say my pro. Like, I think for me, soccer, that's how I kind of quote unquote de-stress like my emotions, like that's how I feel like alive, you know, leaving everything that happens at mm. home. Soccer is just like my passion. I, I bet for any sport, any any person who feels like at home is in the best place, but soccer or any sport makes them feel very homey, very comfortable. So. Yeah, I love that. Seeing everybody nod their heads. Y'all agree with that. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, so let me ask another related uh, athletic question. Uh, being uh, in the Dallas Athletic Conference uh, and having to compete across the region, from your perspective this year in 2022, who has been your toughest opponent thus far? I don't like to consider opponents tough, but uh, hey, yeah, I'm not right. that we did play this year <laughs> that I feel it was a challenge was uh, Grace in college. They had an Oregon commit, and they just had a lot of people that were just a lot bigger. and just okay. It was a different look. Rather than like seeing what we see in conference, so do, do you remember the score of that game? Mm -hmm. It was it was about it was probably about thirty. Okay, okay, <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, I would have to say that our biggest opponent was ourselves. I think that we, mm. as a collective, weren't able to collaborate and agree and get to a good point where we were united. And so without that unity, we weren't able to do as good as we were hoping for in the season. But at the end of the day, we made progress. And I'm very happy to say that today we are together and united. That's excellent. I'm happy to hear that. The hardest opponent I ever had to face was Richland College. They Richland. Won, they won uh, three times national. Yeah, I hear that back all the back time. Back to back. <laughs> back to back to back national champions. Yeah, Richland. they had a lot of recruits from like Spain, Italy, every from all the corners from the world. And then we have players from... Avon Dallas, so it's hard to compete against their level, but they're what well, we believe in ourselves. And then last season we were losing 10-0, but this season we brought it to two zero. So I'm proud of our progress, our yeah, our progress, <laughs> our effort, and our coach was happy about it. Just letting you know, Thunder Ducks, we're coming for you. Just so you know. <laughs> <clears throat> oh um, yeah, so uh, first game of the season it was against Hill College. And we fell below more than we wanted to in the box score. But um, I feel mo like most of the issue was more mentally. It's not really talent-wise because we have the talent to produce some numbers out there. But I feel like more of it's a mental game. Okay, Hill College, right? Mm -hmm. And you reminded me you weren't pitching that day, right? No. Okay, okay. <laughs> Make sure. All right. Um, I feel our hardest competition of the season was um, Dallas Christian College. Um, I felt like myself and some of my other teammates we went there thinking like oh they're not warming up good we can just come in and beat them but they were really more disciplined than us and um they wanted it more that day so okay how much did we lose by uh it was about like it wasn't too bad maybe like 17 points. 76 75 i mean 76 71 
So it was well, a varsity it was team. Way so it was close. Cool. To <laughs> okay. I was just distracted. Like, it was so bad. Like, right. But it was close. They did good. It wasn't a Grayson College loss. Uh, okay. All right. Um, for our team, well, my this is my personal opinion. I think our hardest. Um, opponent was Mountain View just because they just, I guess, like to talk and they think we're aggressive. <laughs> but we just got into... The so Mountain View got in your head? Is Basically, that right? That's what I'm trying to say, you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so <laughs> we eventually lost like 4 0, 3 0. I don't remember, but um, it's just like the negativity that was, was just all over the field and we were just getting a lot of fouls. The ref was calling everything. And then I heard some things about the coaches, but I ain't gonna say it on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but we are, but but we are, we are trying to unite around yeah. Dallas College, and so we will work on our sportsmanship, sports <clears throat> sports personship, moving forward. But I appreciate hearing about the the Mountain View Lions being our toughest opponent. In women's soccer. Yes, yes. in soccer. Thank yes, you. Indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, I appreciate that. So, so let me let me let me shift gears a little bit. Um, let's talk about language, um, and culture, and communication. And uh, you know, I have young people in my household who, um, in my opinion, uh, at times speak a totally different language. <laughs> I have no idea what they're saying and what they're trying to convey. <laughs> uh, but if you could help me by giving me some language and some lingo that could help help me glean some knowledge of what the heck they're saying, <laughs> I would appreciate that. So what are some popular phrases and culture, you know, that you all are using in today's culture to help us old guys understand <laughs> what's being said? I would say a popular phrase is uh, the word yo. The word yo. So it's basically just saying hello or what's up. So if someone okay. wants to call me, and I'll be like, yo. Okay, yo. Okay. <laughs> All right, versus hello. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. I don't really use a lot of slang, but the one that I hear all the time is sus, as in that's oh, yeah. suspicious. Like that's sus, as that's in sus. sus. Oh, wow. As in suspect or sus suspicious. suspicious. Like that, that's weird. Like that's, I got to look into that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So this weather is kind of <laughs> sus. Okay. Got you. I got you. I got you. I'm, I'm learning. Okay. Good. I'm gonna be right. like dog. What's up, dog? What's up, dog? Yeah. Okay. Not not you know not your dog. Not your no, dog. Not my not my dog. Not your puppy. But <laughs> okay. So that's a term of endearment. Brother, yeah, friend. That's brother that you got in there with your friends. Okay. It's your dog. Okay. All right. I got you. Others? Uh, yeah, I don't use too much slang because, like, around the house, my dad will, like, correct me if I even, <laughs> I can't say, like, what's up or, yeah, okay. or I, because he'll be like, yes, sir, yes. I'm okay, like that. good. <laughs> yeah, but usually it's pretty basic outside of the household, but, yeah, it's nothing too crazy or complex. Okay, all right, okay. Um, I say that's pressure or I say that's <laughs> tough a lot, which means, like, it's real cool. Oh, you sl slow down. You're going too fast. <laughs> what was the first one? What was the first one? That's pressure. That's like, pressure. Mm -hmm. As in the pressure in your tire? No, pressure, like. Pressure in your pipes? What? <laughs> no, like whatever they're showing you or you see, you be like, that's really hard. Like, I would like that. Like, I like how that looks or whatever. So pressure is a positive thing. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so let me try to put this in a sentence. <laughs> so, so being on this video blog, that's pressure. Period. Yeah. Period. <laughs> <laughs> You're throwing too many at me, but I'm going to try to key up. So pressure, period. Okay, got you. All right. Any other language I should know? I actually learned this um, from my brother because I try not to use a lot of slang because I do try to perfect my English just because, you know, English is my second language. But my brother always says, Julie, why are you capping? And I'm uh, like, what do you mean I'm capping? I, I don't even have like a bottle cap. Like, what are you talking okay. about? Okay. And then he explained it to me, and he was like, "Girl, you lying." I was like, "Okay, you should have said that." Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So if I were to coach, if I were to try to use that in a sentence, I would say, "This video blog uh, is awesome. No cap." There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no cap. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I appreciate period, you. Period. 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 <laughs> period. Period. I learned on another show that this show is also pushing P. Oh. Okay. Huh? Okay. See? See? Look at you. See? Look, I'm saying. I'm saying. Look, you know, I'm all right. Good. That's right. So let me, let me, I got only got a couple more questions. Um, and I want to go back to athletics for a second. Because again, uh, I just remember from my old days, you know, there's certain elation that you would feel at certain points in time. And usually that was doing a victory. So from your time here at Cedar Valley, what has been the most pivotal moment in your career or your greatest victory here as a Cedar Valley son? Uh, my favorite moment as a Cedar Valley son, it was uh, this season. I actually had a career high. We had played Southwestern uh, Community College, and we won the game, and I had uh, 43 points. So. Oh! oh. 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 JB. Wow. <laughs> Man. Okay. Congratulations. Um, so I am, I, I was first team all conference and I was also named captain, but I think my biggest accomplishment or achievement as a Cedar Valley son was having the opportunity to see my teammates sit together at a game. And I think that we had a lot of um, exclusion and a lot of just separation between the team. And then one day we all noticed when we sat down at Chipotle that we, we were all sitting against our partner across from each other. And so for us to be united and together was probably my biggest uh, achievement. Excellent. I appreciate that. Yeah. Excellent. Who'll go next? Uh, one of my achievements was being or being selected as second team all conference. But my greatest achievement was off, off the field while maintaining a 4.0 GPA. Oh, I love that. Mm. The reason why we're here. Yes, and Coach, you said you want to jump yeah, in? Yeah, I just want to spotlight uh, Soleil. 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 So the games that I did come to the volleyball game, and I'm like, that little girl can jump. And, and I'm watching her, and sh they setting her up, and I'm like, dang. So she's really good. I was so excited to see her play because I'm like, hello, she, she get up. Yeah. She, yeah. She, she is a ball. So oh, I really did. <laughs> Alyssa, oh, my gosh. Like, uh, yeah, she, and for her she to be so short, she, she can get up safe. there. Just for you, Alyssa, I was told I need to tell everybody that you're amazing. She asked me to tell everybody that she is amazing. Uh, <laughs> so, so who was the leaper? That was me. That's you. I was the libero. So you got to be careful because Coach is not done recruiting. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Just know that. She's already transferring, Coach. Okay. Awesome. Other other memorable moments? Yeah. Oh, since we're name dropping. Uh, so, like, <laughs> uh, we had a game against uh, North Lake College. And so we were kind of dominant, like, the first, I would say, like, it's about six inning. And then we kind of crumbled a little bit, like, mentality-wise. And the energy started going down since we were, like, so high up. And then uh, they kind of gained back on us. But um Peyton Starr our first baseman he came during Peyton Starr yeah second semester he came around but um yeah he hit he hit a walk off like a walk off double off the wall and it was a walk off win it was electric afterwards I was yelling so much I lost my voice for like a week <laughs> wow I love nice, that I nice. love that I love that I'd say for me um at the beginning of the season my team was like trying to figure out how to play with each other. And once we got it together, we were able to win our district. And that was a highlight for me. And we could get revenge against Mountain View for our other sport too. <laughs> okay, excellent, 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 excellent. My accomplishment when I was, well, I am in on the Cedar Valley team, I actually was named captain and I also got the first conference team award and my GPA is really high, and I was able to get into the Phi Kappa, no, Phi Theta Kappa. Phi Theta Kappa. I don't know okay, I yes. That. I think that's Latin. Latin is close to Spanish. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's pronounce it, but those are my accomplishments. That's huge because you're in our yes. National Honor Society, and that will take you so very far uh -huh. in life. Congratulations to all of you. We're so proud of you, and thank you for choosing. Uh, the Cedar Valley campus out of all the places you could have gone. Uh, but let me just ask um, one last question. Um, unfortunately, uh, life isn't forever. Uh, there's a point in time where our time on this earth is over. And when your time is done, share with us what you hope your legacy will be. 
Um, the legacy that I want to leave uh, passed down from generation to generation, I just want to just instill it in the bloodline that just hard work and just work ethic, it can get you so far. And um, I just want, like, my brand, shoot first. It'll always be passed down to my kids, grandkids, and it'll be able to provide for them. Uh, I really want to create generational wealth just for just my bloodline and just everybody from generations that's up under me. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. I think that for me, I want my legacy to be that no matter who you are or where you come from or what you stand for, you stand for it proudly and you have a lot of pride and um, joy that comes from that. And I don't think that you shy down from being different or from choosing a different path compared to other people and you just run with it. And I think I also want to remind everyone that we're human and that we're allowed to make mistakes yeah. and for us yeah. to be able to be present in the moments that we're in and <clears throat> we never get them back. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's, That's right. It. That's right. John, what legacy will you leave, sir? Uh, I want my legacy to be my faith. My mother always prays for me. And then she she always says, the only thing I can le- uh, leave you is my faith that you're believing in God. And I want that to be a special thing for my kids and my grandkids because... I want them to have eternal life. That's exceptional. Thank you for sharing that, sir. Um, Whenever I pass, I just want to, like, work ethic and you to follow your passion to be, like, the main priority. I don't want you to feel like you have to fill in anyone else's shoes prior. uh, So just create your own path and be true to yourself and don't change for anybody. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Um, when I go, I just want to be known for my vibrancy and my ability to be able to adapt at anything and be good at it and um, turn any bad situation into a positive light. And I hope that I could pass that on to my family and all my friends as well. Well, Nia, I can say that you are probably already known for your vibrancy. So <laughs> you're well on your way. Yes, indeed. <laughs> when I pass away, I want people to know me by... Um, being very determined, not giving up on my dreams, despite on the criticism I get, even from family members. So I just want them to be like, oh my God, hey, Julie, you you did that. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Coach, what about you? When you think about legacy, what legacy uh, will you leave? My legacy, um, I always say to inspire, to inspire before I expire. Inspire before you expire. <laughs> Say that one more time. Say that one more time. Expire before I expire. Excellent, excellent, mm-hmm. excellent. So this has just been an amazing conversation. I, I'm so happy to be in this moment with you all. Uh, just a couple other questions popped into my head that I'm curious to know. Uh, teams, none of you uh, are. None of you play individual sports. You all are on a team sport. Tell me what you love most about the team that you are a part of. Who'll go first? Uh, what I love most about uh, my team this year was that uh, it was a young team, so it was only two sophomores. So I got the opportunity just to just lead how lead how I want to, and really set an example for them to just give them just give them game and get them gems for them to apply later down the road and use for next year and next season. So you were, this was a coachable team. This was a, a team that was easy to be led or wanted to be led or no? Yes, sir. It's, it's, it's a little bit. It's a little okay. bit. They're still young. So, I okay. mean, my advice, it, it kind of helps them, but they'll they'll see what I'm talking about later <laughs> down the road. Okay. Sure. Awesome. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Uh, I'd have to say that I love our lightheartedness and our energy to our team. We have a very goofy and weird team, but at the same time, we're all very similar in many ways. So we get along really well. Awesome. So y'all have fun. We have so much fun. (laughs) Good. I love to hear that. Yes, indeed. Our our soccer team is just jokes is on the team. Like we all like to hang out like after practices or after games. And then it's it's like a brotherhood. Everyone's together. They like send each other messages, like to check up on each other. Okay. That's, why, that's yeah. what I really like about our team. I just hear y'all yeah. brotherhood. Y'all bonded. That's great. Yes, Excellent. Sir. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So um, all these guys are pretty much new. I think there's only like three returning sophomores. But um, yeah, I like the energy that everybody has. And then it feels like team chemistry has grown, like, grown very strong over the like, last couple months. And I feel like it's unbreakable at this point. I love that. Unbreakable. That's excellent. All right. Nia? 
Uh, I feel like, like a lot of them were saying, like, our team's very funny and we can bond over the stupidest things that we'll just laugh. All the practice and probably get in trouble for. But, <laughs> <laughs> and like, um, that we hang out after practice and study together. And I feel like we're all in it together. So that makes it easier being a student athlete. Excellent. Love that. Mm -hmm. My team. I think every team is goofy. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> every team is goofy, and I really love um, how you know. Even though I'm captain, other people step up and you know play the role as captain too. So I just see everyone as basically captain because they create that bond with each other. And you know we can't play during the season, but after the season was over, they they picked up some games at some indoor and they bonded. So that's what I love about my team. They're very. They have that unity within them, within each other. Great, excellent, <laughs> excellent, excellent. So let me let me ask you. I know you talked earlier about how consuming your sport is, and how consuming it is being a student, and how consuming uh, life uh, just is in general. Do y'all have any hobbies or anything that you like to do that's outside of your sport that might be interesting that you want to share? Really, outside of basketball, I really like to focus on my brand. And I just really like to just get my time. Tell us what that brand is again. Shoot First Studios, once again. You know, like, <laughs> online, www www.shootfirststudios.com. Okay. But uh, off the basketball court, I really like to spend my time, just dedicating my time to that and just putting my passion into that. Excellent. Okay, I appreciate that. That's more than a hobby, though. Yeah, yes, indeed. <laughs> so outside of my sport, I actually still continue to play my sport. But besides that, I love to watch Netflix. I'm, I'm binge watch Netflix all the time. So what show are you binge watching now? Currently, I'm watching Ozark. Oh, that's a good Ozark. Show. It is really, really good. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. I, I love that show, too. I have to admit. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, my hobbies, I, I like to go fishing. I like to play chess. And I also like to like uh, to read Christian books. Okay, awesome. I love that. Any more hobbies anyone wants to share? Uh, I like to draw my free time. And uh, yeah, movies too. Watching a lot of different movies to like, I feel like it's better to have all these like references. If people ever reference like a show or a joke, I don't want to be left out. But uh, yeah. That's okay, bad. excellent, excellent. Yes, indeed. Um, some of my hobbies, well, I like bedazzling things. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch that. What did you say? Bedazzling. <laughs> bedazzling. Yeah. Okay. Make it sparkly. Yeah. Sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> Uh, okay. And also like cooking, like I've taken a few cooking classes and I just want to get like my grandma, I can know a thousand recipes without having to measure anything. <laughs> I really enjoy it. Oh, wow. That's okay. <laughs> Fantastic. I guess I just do volunteer work on my, that's my hobby, volunteer work. And okay. I like to travel. I'm actually going to Colombia for the spring break. So. Oh, good for you. Well, yeah. hopefully it's a lot warmer. There. I don't know. I think I got the bad weather. Yeah. Good, good, good. Coach, what about you? What hobbies do you have? Oh, I like to model. I love taking pictures. Um, I like to shop. Um, that's it. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> so another question I've been dying to ask um, as relates to, um, you know, the words we live by. Uh, to give you an example, uh, the words I live by, uh, there's a quote from Gandhi. And Gandhi says that harmony is achieved when what you think and what you say and what you do are aligned. And so basically, Gandhi teaches us to say what you think and do what you say. And my life has gotten so much simpler <laughs> since I've followed that advice. I'm curious to know from your perspective, what are some words that you live by that you'd be willing to share? Uh, some meaningful words I live by. It's a quote by J. Cole, and it says, keep grinding, boy. Your life can change in one year, and even when it's dark outside, the sun is shining somewhere else. So just breaking down that quote, like whatever you do, just continue to do it. Like don't ever give up. You don't ever, you don't ever know how close you it is for your dream to come true. Like tomorrow might be the day that you know what I'm saying you become rich or something. Right. So I just, I just keep that. Never get too high. Never get too low. And just stay balanced and just continue to be humble. I love that. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, my parents have said two things to me ever since I was a little kid, and I still live by those things to this day. My dad always told me and my mom saying that you have greatness within you and you can do anything that you set your mind to. And I think that sometimes it just takes that 
step forward of this is exactly what I want to do and I'm going to stick to it and I can achieve it no matter what anybody says. Excellent. Excellent. I appreciate that. You're fortunate. Yes, indeed. Uh, so my quote, it comes from the Bible. It comes from Colossians 3, 23. It says, work willing at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather for the people. So like my mom always says, if if I'm like a garbage man, let me be the best garbage man. I want to oh, become right. excellent, that's right. excellent at whatever I do. That's exactly right. I love that. Excellent. Any others? Um, a quote. You can say I live by is um, believe you can and you're already halfway there. I feel like a lot of people don't want to try things because they don't want to fail, but you can't fail if you never tried it in the first place. Exceptional, exceptional. One of my favorite, one my favorite person is Malcolm X. I'm actually reading his autobiography. Yeah, and that's how I started to focus more on my English because he was in prison. So he kind of read a lot of books. Right. So he says, education is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. So that's why I, I want to, you know, focus on the way I speak on the way I just do things, you know, and I want to read a lot of books just because as I said, English is my second language and I want to be better for America, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And you know, and I can and I can just say how on, uh, an honor it is for me uh, to be a part of your legacy, a part of your journey. You know, you are uh, the future is uh, does belong to all of you, and I'm proud and happy to see how hard and how serious you are at getting prepared for that. Well, again, that's our time. Uh, we appreciate you all streaming us. Uh, again, this is Sensational News, the video blog where we celebrate the amazing students and the phenomenal programs at the Cedar Valley campus of the Dallas College family. Uh, remember, we are the Cedar Valley Suns the, because the sun never sets on the possibilities. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Take care. Meet the three generations of Leonard's. You know how to do it. You do it okay. right. All right. Yeah. You know I was in the war, but I never got a chance to go to college. And me either. I had kids young and I had to work two jobs. TJ is the first in his family to go to college. Now that I'm going to Dallas College, I think it's time for me to man the grill. Uh, you hear that? Good thing you're going to college. You, you got, got a lot, lot to learn. learn. <laughs> Don't mind them, TJ. You'll be cooking up a new career in no time. Dallas College. To learn more about Dallas College, click here. It's right there. It's a button. You just click it. Yeah, that's it. Click it.